What's going on my fellow collectors? Jim here with another figure review. Today let's check out the brand new, I'm assuming because I've never seen these before and I found these at Toys R Us today, the Pacific Rim Uprising action figures. And these are by Tamashii Nation's Bandai uh, Legendary. I believe these are kind of like the Dragon Ball Z uh, or the Superstars Dragon Ball Z figures because these were only $19.99. I did pick up the Titan Redeemer, and that actually rang up at twenty nine ninety nine. But I was able to talk the lady down, you know, to to put it at nineteen ninety nine because it was on the same peg as this. That was nineteen ninety nine for all of these figures. Um, I'm not one hundred percent familiar with Pacific Rim at all, so you know, I just like cool looking action figures. I thought this Gypsy Avenger was a very cool design look. But uh, this is the packaging. It's pretty nice. Um, a lot of the figure is hidden behind the graphics. But uh, you got Pacific Rim up here. You got uh, the robot spirits. You got the Gypsy Avenger at the top there. You got that down at the bottom. Get that on the side. That on the side. And on the back, you got a couple of images of the actual figure. So that's pretty cool. The bottom of the packaging. But yeah, let's go ahead and crack this out of the box and uh, take a look at the figure itself. Okay, and here he is out of the packaging along with all the accessories that we do get with this figure. Now, once again, I'm just stating that I, you know, I'm not big into Pacific Rim and I have not yet seen this movie. So, you know, I don't know how accurate or what things are called. I'm in, I'm in for it for the action figure and just the curiosity of how this line is going to turn out. But I mean, right off the bat and right messing around with it a little bit, you can definitely tell that, you know, yeah, I mean, at the price point, you're not getting as much as you would normally get with, you know, Bandai Tamashii Nations. Like a good example is just looking at the box art, you're missing a lot of that, you know, shading. So I think shading on this figure would have really, really brought it to the next level. That's for sure. And it's really missing all of that. Um, there is a little backdrop here in the back of the packaging. It says the Pan Pacific Defense Corps. That's pretty cool. And then it looks like we even get a little bit of instructions. Just going over all of the uh, parts that do come with this figure and how to put it all on there. So that is pretty nifty, which I will probably need for this. But uh, let's take a closer look at um, all the accessories first. So we do have this one accessory, which again is missing shading, but you know, nice sculpt. I do like how we have this translucent blue here in the middle. Got some nice silver paint for the this portion of it, and then again with nice sculpt. Like I said, it's just really, really missing um, any kind of shading whatsoever to bring out any of the details, and not a lot of paint whatsoever. It's basically just molded in the plastic. We have this accessory, which I think is really cool looking. You know, again, really lacking paint. I mean, nice silver chrome paint we get here for this blade. The rest of it is pretty, pretty plain. We have these two pieces here, which I believe go on the back of the shoulders somewhere, or, or, or no, they go on the back of the figure like so, and these little port sections here. Maybe I have them upside down. No, it says it goes like this. Why aren't these porting in here? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, there we go. So we can port these in the back here. Oops, sorry about that. So that's pretty cool. And apparently they should be labeled right and left, but I don't see any right or left on them. Or maybe I had them. That's what it was. I had them in the wrong spots. So that's what they look like port on the back of the figure. 
And then we have different option parts for the arm. So I'm guessing this forearm pops off of here, which it does. So, oh, sorry about the focus, guys. Let me bring this back a little bit. So the forearm does pop off, and you can put on this one awesome accessory. So you can port that into there like this. So that is pretty cool. And then you have the other arm, which looks like you can pop off as well and you can put on this accessory so all of the accessories do have this kind of you know key shape that you have to match up with the peg and that's how it will go on there that's how it should go on there anyway maybe I'm doing it backwards No, it should go in like that. Why isn't it going in there? There it goes. So that's pretty neat that we have all of these different, you know, option parts for this. And we even have some interchangeable hands. So that is pretty cool that we even get a couple of interchangeable hands with this guy. So, I mean, you know, the concept design is very cool. I think it's really neat. So I'm always down for some cool looking action figures. Um, I will say some of these are pretty, pretty much a pain, man, to get back on here. I don't know why, but there we go. So it looks like we have a couple different hands. Popping those are, looks like it's just a little ball peg. So you can swap on the other hands. And these are kind of at an angle. So I guess this is more for you know, there is a little bit of movement in that, but the way the hand is sculpted, it's up like that. But we do get the two pairs for each side of the hands, as well as the fists. So, I mean, you know, for 20 bucks, decent accessories, I will say, you know, pretty decent accessories for the price point already. And I think I have this one on backwards. There we go. All right, now taking a closer look at the figure itself, I think it looks pretty cool. And I mean, it does match the box art and it does match the movie, you know, fairly well. You're just not getting a lot of the shading work in it that I think would have really, really made this figure pop. Uh, the paint on it is, you know, clean, you know, for the price point. Like these little, you know, paint markings that we have right here are pretty clean, even for how small it is here. We got some, you know, legi legible writing here. And all the red is pretty cleanly painted on there. I do like the visor that came out good. You know, it's got like this nice yellow color that I guess is supposed to make it look like it's glowing. And then this part in the middle here is really cool, done with nice translucent orange plastic. So that's pretty cool. It's like a reddish orange. And we got these nice little, you know, silver touches all throughout. Uh, the legs are pretty plain, pretty plain looking. We got some writing on here, some numbers on there. But uh, yeah, the legs are pretty, pretty plain looking. That's for sure. I mean, we got some decent little sculpt here, but yeah, some wash would have would have went a, a, a long way to make this figure really pop. The back of them, once again, is pretty plain. Doesn't look very, very good. But I mean, overall, for 20 bucks, it's just like the Dragon Ball figures, you know? Those are decent figures for the price point. Uh, as far as articulation, you can turn the head left and right. Uh, there is a little bit of like a shift forward and back. He will look down about that much. He's not really looking up too much. And yeah, you get a little bit of side to side tilt in there. So that is cool. The arms, 
Where did that go? The arms do hinge out, but as you saw, you know, that shoulder pad's gonna pop off of there, but we do have this kind of double ball peg system going here. So you can get rotation around the ball there. Then of course the other ball just kind of goes up and down. We do have rotation there, like a bicep rotation. You do get about that much bend out of the arm and you do have swivel and a little bit of up and down and back and forth movement at the hands. As far as the torso, we do have rotation. So it'll pretty much rotate all, probably all the way around. Um, as far as the legs, there's no drop down, but this will kind of come out a little bit. So they will pretty much kick out pretty much the entire splits going forward. Nice, they go forward and don't even really kick out that much. You could probably keep going, but of course it's gonna you know, kick out at an angle at some point. Uh, you do have rotation right there around that joint. Uh, for the knee, looks like we get a you know two hinges there, but it only brings it back about that much, which isn't too bad. Uh, down here at the feet, Looks like we have a little bit of up and down movement. So pretty decent movement forward, pretty decent movement back. Um, you can kind of shift that forward and back. So I guess that gives you a little bit more back. Shift it forward, gives you a little bit more forward. And you do have nice rocker in there. So that is cool. So I mean, yeah, I mean, for the articulation, it's not bad. Let me see what I can do over here. So you can bring his arm up about that much until that shoulder pad is just going to pop off of there. Of course, rotating that, you can rotate it about that much up. I guess if these pieces weren't on the back, you could, you'd be able to rotate it all the way around. So, um, you know, not bad movement. Not bad movement at all. You know, you can really get his legs up quite a bit and get him like really, really crouched down. And his feet are big enough to where it's going to give him, you know, nice stability and be able to stand. So that's another plus on having the big, you know, the big feet that have decent movement, I will say. I mean, you get all around, you know, forward and back and even rocker out of that. So that is really, really cool. So, yeah, I mean, for the... For the price point, I think these are pretty decent figures. I mean, I won't say they're the best figures, that's for sure. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, if Tamashi Nations are doing these figures um, at a higher price point, you will get a much better quality figure out of it. Might look a little better, and I think the shading is really what is missed with this figure quite a bit. But, I mean, he comes with some pretty decent accessories. Um, as far as a measurement, looks like he is right about at that 7 inch scale. But yeah guys, that was a look at the Pacific Rim Gypsy Avenger. Pretty cool figure for the price point, you know what I mean? I'm not too mad at it. Let me get this shoulder pad back on here, which is just kind of popping this in right there and I mean the shoulder pads themselves do move so you get a nice little bit of movement out of that but it's just you know you kind of got to watch the shoulder pads as you're moving the arm around because it's you know you go too far and it's just going to kind of pop it out but that is pretty cool I mean you will be able to get him into some pretty decent dynamic poses for you know the price point so that is pretty cool even movement in the torso and he does come with some pretty cool accessories as well uh, hands are popping off all falling off on me already I mean there's a lot kind of going on with this guy as far as parts and things so might get a little bit frustrating trying to manipulate some of that stuff and keeping that stuff out of the way as far as a size comparison, since I have them here, this is a size comparison next to the SH Figure Arts Iron Man 3 Tony Stark figure. And here is a comparison next to the Marvel Legends Hella. 
So that just gives you a little bit of size comparison as far as what he is going to look like on the shelf. But yeah, for you Pacific Rim fans, this might be a line that you might be interested in just because it's at such a nice price point of 20 bucks. But yeah, that was a look at the figure, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next figure review.